Deep within Cartoon Network's Halloween programming lies a sextet of horrifying stories that are bound to leave all viewers of the TV PG rating trembling in fear. From werewolves and wizards to murderers and mothers to terrifying entities such as ball lightning, there's no telling what horror creeps around the corner in Terror Tales from the Park. <laughs> It's Halloween, and I'm scared because of that. And today we're talking about a fantastic Halloween series within a series, Terror Tales of the Park from Regular Show. It's much like The Simpsons' Treehouse of Horror, but with all that classic Regular Show stuff that makes the show so unique. It mostly features around the main cast of characters, exchanging stories between each other in a different setting and different costumes every time, and the stories themselves vary as well, from some classic horror to some more current horror to some sci-fi elements later down the line. It really is a fantastic little series within a series, which is what I'm going to stick to calling it, because it's not really its own series, it's inside a regular show. I, I enjoy it a lot. I usually go back to it every Halloween, maybe watch one episode that I really like, but this Halloween I decided to do something different. I watched all of them, and I wanted to see which one was the best Halloween short, because there has to be one. There has to be one that is better than all the other ones, and today that's what we're going to be looking to find out. Which terror tale from the park truly is the most horrifying and best story out of them all? My name is Mr. Cal. Let's get this underway by talking about the first ever terror tales of the park. First off, we have Creepy Doll, which revolves around Pops finding a creepy doll that he used to play with that likes to draw on people's faces and is now attacking Mordecai, Rigby, and Pops. It's not great. It's nothing remarkable. It kind of puts you in the Halloween mood, but it's not overly funny or overly scary or any creepy elements really whatsoever. It's just a little light Halloween story. Not exactly what we're looking for, so we'll move on rather quickly from this one. Next up, we have Death Metal Crash Pit, which is about Muscle Man and High Five Ghost finding a strange RV in the fog and wanting to drive it into the crash pit, but then they learn there are some specters within this RV. It's, it's not very good either. It's nothing remarkable. It kind of gets in that Halloween mood. It's a little bit funnier than Creepy Doll. It's nothing crazy. It's definitely not a strong start for this Terror Tales of the Park. However, I remember this episode being formatted differently. I remember this next one we're going to talk about coming first. I don't know if they changed the order when I rewatched it. I rewatched it on Hulu, so it's not a great start off to things. But the next story is In the House. This one is pretty dang good. I like it a lot. It's about Mordecai and Rigby or more or less Rigby egging someone's house because they didn't have candy out and they're, they're supposedly home, all this fun stuff. And then he is cursed by a wizard that lives in the house. Now, this is where I think Terror Tales of the Park really finds stride is with this final one. Maybe that's why they put it at the end. I, I honestly think you should start strong. Maybe the second two aren't as good, but that's just me. This is how the episodes are formatted on Hulu, so I'll just let it lie as it is. This one's really fun. This one's really goofy, and it even has a few creepy moments in it. From, like, Muscle Man's skin getting torn off or inverted or something like that. And all the clever ways they get around Cartoon Network's clear guidelines for violence and things like that. Because it's pretty obvious that regular show, in some areas, wants to go farther with the adult content, but has to restrain itself and tries to find these creative ways around things. And if you're paying attention for them, it can really make you giggle a couple of times, and this episode definitely did that for me. Now, the main premise of it is, Rigby gets cursed, and is turned into a house. And then they have to defend the house, the rest of the park, from this wizard. And the wizard kills all of them, gets to Rigby, and his great revenge is then egging Rigby as a house. It's fantastic. I, I love this episode so much. It, it always gets me to giggle. It's it's one of the best stories, if not the best story from this first episode. I, I can definitely say that. This is the best episode from the first part of Terror Tales of the Park. Easy. It made me laugh. It had some creepy imagery. It's nothing incredibly, like, scary, but it's a nice, fun, regular show episode for sure. The, this is the highlight 
of this first part. And there's only three stories in this first part, so I say that uh, for right now, at least in the house, has a pretty commanding lead for the best of the best. Now with the second part of Terror Tales of the Park, the show really starts to find its footing. Instead of being formatted like a normal episode of regular show, now these are stories being told between all the characters, which is a perfect setting for stories of this kind. Plus, the characters telling the stories can add some of their own personality and thoughts and everything about them into these stories, and we'll see that play out down the line. First off though, we have the story Payback, told by Mordecai. Mordecai is beating everyone in bowling with his uncle Steve and some members of the park there as well, but then the rest of the gang wants to leave, but he insists they play one more game. His uncle Steve, who's there for some reason, it tells him that he doesn't have enough money, and Mordecai offers to cover the $5 so that they can play another game. But as Uncle Steve reaches down to grab his bowling ball, his tie is sucked in and we get one of the best edited sequences ever in the history of Cartoon Network. I can't believe he's gone. I apologize if this clip is a little choppy, pun intended, but I was laughing hysterically when I first saw this and was first recording it. So I had to pause it. I think I knocked a drink over. It was a mess, but at the same time, it's a really funny piece of editing. I really like this a lot. It's tremendous. Uh, the episode itself, the story itself, I should say, is really straightforward. Mordecai's getting haunted by his uncle. He thinks it's because he uh, made him play that last game of bowling, which led to his death, so he's gonna haunt him, kill him, whatever. But it turns out he just wants to pay him back the five dollars, and the story ends. It's not very scary, but it's definitely a pretty funny story, mostly just because of that one edited sequence. This is a really solid one for sure. It's a quick bite, you get in, you get out, and we move on to the next story, which is another pretty dang good one, Party Bus, which is told by Margaret over the phone while they're on their way to the Halloween party. Now, this story is about Mordecai, Rigby, Margaret, and Eileen all wanting to go see a movie for Halloween, but Benson and Skips need the cart to patrol the park for young people vandalizing it. Vandalizers, hooligans, in fact. So they decide to call a taxi when a party bus shows up and they figure, well, I guess this works too, hop in. But then they realize this is no ordinary party bus. As the party bus drives forward and the faster it drives, the more its passengers age, an evil, evil contraption. So they have to fight to get off. And there's a good amount of scary imagery in this one as people fade to dust straight up Indiana Jones style. It's a lot of fun and the story ends with them putting the car into reverse and aging backwards and out of existence. It's a funky, kooky end. It's definitely a little bit scary. It's definitely a little bit funny at times. It's a solid all around story. We've gotten two really good ones so far. I don't see how this episode could get any worse. Wallpaper Man. This one's not that good. I'll be completely honest, I'm not a huge fan of this story at all. It's told by Benson, and there's some nice little touches here and there, subtleties of Benson's character put into the story. It's not as obvious as later episodes, but still, I think it gets the job done. It's about Mordecai and Rigby having to re-wallpaper the house because they messed up the wall, and hiring a guy called Wallpaper Man Jan, who will do the entire thing for free. But then they learn that he's actually a spider, and we get a pretty scary transition from Wallpaper Man Jan to Spider-Man Jan, I guess is what we'll call him. It's a spooky transition. It feels like just a normal episode of regular show, not really a horror, you know, Halloween episode. But still, it's an enjoyable watch, but we're looking for a, you know, Halloween special. And this one doesn't quite get the job done, in my opinion. It's just not a very scary Halloween story. But like I said, this one kind of has an overarching story, so I guess we could count it as having four stories I, I i don't think so but i like how this one's ends so i'll bring it up the idea is that they're going to this party inside of skips's car and you know they're hitting a lot of hiccups along the way telling stories to pass the time and the episode ends with them crashing the car all of them dying and going inside to just enjoy the party as ghosts it's a nice little ending all in all a fun halloween special with one not very good story but two really solid ones if i had to pick a favorite from this one for our you know, later finding out which one's the best of the best. 
it's probably got to be payback. I really like the edited sequence in that one a lot. It got me to laugh hysterically. Party Bus is also a really good one, but payback is probably my favorite from this set. So let's move on to number three. Part three focuses around the park gang placing bets on who can tell the best scary story. And it starts out with Rigby telling his story called Killer Bed, which is about Rigby buying a new bed and finding out there is a murderer that has been sewn inside of it and turning the bed into, you know, a murderer bed hybrid, I guess. Uh, this one's definitely a little bit goofy. It's told by Rigby, so it's a little bit out there at times, especially with the ending. It's got a pretty dang funny ending, which features Rigby getting all the promotions and then the editing for it, once again, is really, really solid and it plays to the humor of the whole bit. It's just tremendous. This one, while it's not scary, is definitely another funnier episode, another funnier story for sure. I like this one a lot. It gets goofy with things and I'm okay with that. And you can kind of tell regular show, everyone already knows this, is a show that very much could have been on Adult Swim. They had to cut back definitely in some areas with both violence and alcohol and things like that. You can, once you're looking for it, you can kind of notice, notice these little things they did. Like the bed has a switchblade that's an Allen wrench, because, you know, having a knife and trying to murder someone is definitely, you know, not exactly kid appropriate at times. So, you know, Allen wrench, there you go. You know, they're like, we don't want kids getting switchblades. Have it be an Allen wrench. It's something like that. I don't know if it was like a personal choice by the creator JJ Quintel or the people on the team or if it was like a note by Cartoon Network. It's like, you can't have him have a knife trying to kill people. Like, fine, we'll make it an Allen wrench. Whatever. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I like this one a lot. It's a solid all-around story. Next up, we have Jacked Up Jack-O-Lantern, as told by Muscle Man. And the episode's about Muscle Man, Mordecai, Rigby, and High Five Ghost destroying a bunch of pumpkins because they need to smash them, get them out of the park, finding a pumpkin patch, smashing some pumpkins, and seeing two scarecrows with a sign that says, don't disturb these two scarecrow lovers or something along those lines. You can smash all the pumpkins you want, but not these two. Naturally, they decide to smash these two scarecrows. They start with the lady scarecrow, smash her up real good. But then once they go for the man scarecrow, he comes to life and we get a little slasher movie-esque kind of story that plays out. This one can be definitely a little bit scary. I was definitely scared of it when I originally saw it as a kid. I can say that with full confidence. And rewatching it now, I can see why. Turning people into pumpkins and smashing them in a slasher horror setting, that's definitely a little bit creepy, for sure. It ends on a kind of goofy note, but it's definitely one of the more scary ones we've seen so far. This is a perfect balance between the funniness and the Halloweeniness that this series should be. It nailed both of those aspects. Although, you know, I could take either one. I'm fine with it being just scary or just funny, but a nice balance between the two is really great. Jacked Up Jack-O-Lantern definitely pulls that off. The final story is about Jebediah Townhouse. It's called The Previous Owner, as told by Benson. And it's not very good. Uh, the idea is that there's this guy who was 200 years ahead of his time. He originally lived in the park house called Jebediah Townhouse. Uh, he was like super into 80s stuff because he was 200 years ahead of his time. Uh, and he vowed he would come back because they thought he was a witch or a warlock or just not good guy. They wanted to kill him. He said, I'm going to come back and haunt whoever is in this house. Uh, so that's what happens. It's not very scary. It's not incredibly funny it's just it's not a great story i'm not a huge fan of this one there's really nothing more i could say about it it's just not that good now another fun little touch about this episode is that the idea is that they're placing this bet with all their candy winner whoever tells the scariest story gets all the candy whoever tells the worst story has to wear their halloween costume until thanksgiving and that actually happens thomas has to wear his pizza halloween costume until thanksgiving it's a fantastic touch. It makes the episode even more funny as a whole. If I had to pick a favorite one from this one, probably Jacked Up Jack-O-Lantern. That's a really solid one. But there are two really, really good ones in this one, for sure. Jacked Up Jack-O-Lantern is, is higher up for me, though. Part 4 features the gang going to see Muscle Man's mom because he talks her up a lot and they think that she may be spooky scary, maybe even. Who knows? Uh, but first off, we have three stories. First one coming from Pops. It's called The Hole. It's, uh, it's a played out story. It's the idea that the gang at the park have to sacrifice someone every year because the park has a big hole in it. And if they don't, something horrible will happen and they can't leave the park uh, ever uh, because of the hole. Uh, they try to throw Pops in the hole after drawing names. His head clogs it and kills it. 
and they learn that they can leave the park, and it was never really that scary, but still High Five Ghost and Thomas are both dead. It's a little scary, it's not that funny, it's just, it's not a very remarkable episode. I, mean, I think it works as an episode of regular show, no problem, even a Halloween episode, but it's just, it's nothing crazy good, it's still just a Halloween story, you could call it that, and that's about all I can say about it. We'll move on to the next one, as told by Benson which is Unfinished Business. Now this one definitely scared me as a kid. It's got more scary imagery than I think any other episode of this entire series within the series. It's about Mordecai and Rigby dying and haunting the park house and Benson having to fire them to get rid of them. Now, the way they go about this is by just showing terrifying, horrifying images constantly of Mordecai and Rigby haunting Benson. It's really kind of creepy. They did a fantastic job with this one. From a Halloween spooky scary perspective, this one nails it. From a funny perspective, again, I'd say this one nails it. The twist of it is Benson was dead the whole time, and he was the one haunting the park house. But it's just like him gliding around as a ghost, seeing Mordecai and Rigby, they do something, he gets scared, and he just kind of floats away. I don't know why, I always find that part really, really funny. Sure, it's a played out twist, but still, that's kind of the joke in it, and I think it plays off well. It's a solid all-around episode, uh, one of my favorites for sure. No spoilers for which one I'm picking as the best, but this one's definitely one of my favorites. And then we move on to the third and final story of this episode. Scary Movie Night, another really, really fun one as told by Rigby. The idea is that ball lightning one night fused together three people's ideas for movies and made it into one gigantic horror movie mess. It's werewolves mixed with classy barbers mixed with Japanese horror girl with big eyes who eats people. I don't really understand that one, but still. It's pretty creepy from time to time, but it's definitely one of the funnier episodes, I would say, and definitely a creative one, too. The way they run on the credits, like they're actually running through the movie, there's a lot of great touches here. I like it a lot. And you can tell it's told by Rigby because there's all these little things thrown in there just with his immature personality. It, it's kind of nice. I, I like this one a lot. It plays well as a Halloween story. It makes fun of a few Halloween tropes at the same time where people run straight towards danger instead of away from it for some reason. It's a good one, for sure. Plus it features ball lightning, which is one of the most terrifying entities as I previously said, or that mysterious figure said in the uh, introduction of this video. Uh, that wasn't me doing a voice that made me have to drink a bunch of LaCroix to get rid of so I could actually record this video and have to take a day off, and which is why this video is delayed. Not because I did that voice, cause of other things. With that rambling out of the way, that's all three of the stories. The gang goes to Muscle Man's mom's, Muscle Man's mom's house. Okay. And there, they get pranked by her, wearing a big scary costume, then it's revealed she's just a normal lady, but still a nice little, you know, creepy little gaff at the end of the episode. Now there's two really great ones here, but I still have to think that Unfinished Business is the best one of part four. I really like that episode. Now we move on to the fifth installment of Terror Tales of the Park, and this one's done in a bit of a different fashion. Now with one of those fortune teller machine things, like in Big with Tom Hanks, where, you know, he's big in that movie. Anyways, there's four stories in this one, so even more to pick apart, but they each go one by one, making a wish to the machine. That's the basis for the story. First up, we have Benson going and making a wish that he could motivate Mordecai and Rigby, starting the story, Mr. Boss Man. It's about a doll that's creepy. Heard of that one before? That's because it already happened once. This one's unmemorable and kind of already happened already. There isn't anything crazy. The only good thing about it is that there's, there's this product called the salad guillotine, and that's kind of cool, and the guy that does the commercials is a little funny. Other than that, it's been done before in this series and in general. It's not very memorable. So we'll just move on to the next one, which is Where Pops. It's told by Pops. It's about the gang all getting put on jury duty on the night of Halloween on a full moon where a werewolf is on trial for eating somebody. It's very obvious he did it. Pops decides to go to the bathroom before they make the verdict. The werewolf follows him in there because he also has to use the bathroom and, well, you know, can't say no. You let one guy go, you gotta let the other guy go. He bites Pops and frames Pops as himself as the werewolf, even though it's obviously Pops. This is played for laughs. Uh, Pops gets sentenced to life in prison, breaks out, 
and runs to the airport, hops onto a plane that's headed to London where he sees the other werewolf because apparently that's where werewolves get treated the best. It then plays Werewolves of London, uh, the song, and uh, with a bunch of werewolves on the plane. That That's that one. <laughs> I don't know. Really, it's cute and it can be funny at times, for sure. It's a quick one too. It just snaps on by. Uh, I like this one. It's not anything spectacular, but it's a pretty good, nice little short story. Next one is Going Up, told by High Five Ghost, right? High Five Ghost, that's correct. Sorry, I'm trying to do this all uh, with notes and no actual, like, synopsis or anything. So High Five Ghost, he wishes he could see Celia, his girlfriend Celia, in Prague. He goes to Prague, gets in an elevator. Elevator man is a ghost. He goes through a creepy ride on a hell elevator. Caesar gets pulled into the elevator and the story's over. Uh, another quick one, not very creepy, just uh, kind of a Halloween story. The last story comes from Rigby, and it's about him and Mordecai as young kids trick-or-treating, uh, and he wants to be cool, so they go up onto this porch of a creepy house, take more candy than they're supposed to, get dragged inside by a witch who then offers them more chocolate. Uh, it's all shaped like body parts, they think that's weird. Then they start to turn into chocolate themselves, uh, get, you know, wrapped up in the bags, Rigby tries running away, gets turned into chocolate and eaten. Uh, this one's really unsettling, I have to say, uh, at least personally. I mean, the idea that they're eating kids that turned into chocolate and then get eaten themselves, it's not a very good circle of life, uh, I, I think. Uh, definitely the creepiest, definitely the best out of this set of stories. This one just didn't really have too many knockout hits, that's why I'm kind of rushing through it to get to the next one. And nothing was too remarkable in this one, there's some funny moments. The chocolate one's probably the creepiest. It's fine. It's probably my least favorite out of all of the whole episodes, for sure. Uh, but if I had to pick a favorite, Chocolatude, that episode. The, the, the last story, for sure. Well, we finally reached the final episode of Terror Tales of the Park in the final season of Regular Show, and much like the setting of the final season, this one has a sci-fi theme to it and a much grander theme to things as well not just featuring haunted houses but haunted planets too which is the basis for the first story told by skips called fear planet where skips benson pops mordecai and rigby are flying through space and their ship runs out of gas they have to land on the closest planet to get more which is fear planet and it can manifest your deepest and darkest fears benson is scared of sharks skips is afraid of frisbee freestylers Rigby is afraid of mascots at amusement parks and also the things Skips and Benson are afraid of. Pops is afraid of the dark and everyone's got their own fears. I guess that's the, the that's the moral of this. It's a goofy one for sure, not a scary one, but it does have some laughs in it. It's all right. It's not tremendous, but it's an okay kind of setting, an okay story for sure. We'll just move on to the next one since there isn't really much more to say on that matter. The next story is told by Eileen, and it's called King-Sized Candy Bars, the things we all look forward to when trick-or-treating as kids, getting big old real-deal candy bars for free from random strangers. This time, the gang goes out to this haunted house type thing, where they see a sign that says, warning, umpire infestation. Except it doesn't say umpire, it says vampire? What? Yeah, so they go in, there's a bunch of vampires, they have to fight them off with these boxes of potatoes with garlic, but Skips accidentally gets chives, he gets taken away. They all get turned into vampires. Uh, there isn't too much to this one either. There's a few funny jokes, it's a little bit suspenseful, the vampire designs are nice and creepy, I can at least give them that. It does feature biting and things of that nature, if that's one of your phobias, and vampires, they're kind of creepy. It does a pretty good job. It's not very memorable. It's not remarkable. I don't have like a lot to say on it, but it's pretty good. I, I'd say it's a good one. I, I feel like in this last season, these last two Terror Tales of the Park, there's just not much to say. They're, they're pretty good Halloween episodes. Nothing fantastic. And Alien Roommate is no exception. That's the next one we hear about. Uh, it comes from Rigby, I believe. Uh, it's about them getting a roommate who's the alien from Alien. It's a bad roommate. Uh, it does annoying things. And uh, then the roommate turns hostile and takes over the house and they have to get rid of it. It's kind of an alien parody. It's fine. Again, nothing spectacular about it at all. Uh, Muscle Man sacrifices himself in the big mech suit like an alien. That's kind of fun. 
Uh, there's, there's a few callbacks to it. It's it's not like a super creative one, but it is a fun one to watch. I, sure, it's a, like kind of a parody of a movie, sure. Uh, but I, I like this one. This is a pretty solid one. If I had to pick a favorite from these three, probably Alien Roommate, even though it's nothing tremendous. Uh, this whole one is just pretty dang good. Uh, there's, there's no standouts whatsoever. Well, it's finally come to that time where we all must pick our favorite terror tales of the park. Now, I encourage you to post your favorites down in the comments below, even your least favorites. I'd love to hear about them and see if people were able to enjoy ones I wasn't able to or hated ones that I also hated, uh, whatever it may be. I honestly don't hate any of these, I would say. Uh, some of them are just okay. Uh, none of them are really that bad, which is what makes talking about them kind of hard because I can't point out their flaws because there aren't really any big flaws, it's just uninteresting, but has some laughs. But as for the good stuff, there is one clear standout, at least for me, that I feel is the best story. And it comes from Muscle Man, and it is jacked up Jack-O-Lantern. I love the slasher setting, I love the character designs, I love the humor in this one. It's just fantastic. I, I really like this story. Easily my favorite, no problem. If I had to pick a least favorite, probably the first one, Creepy Doll. That was just not scary, not super unique and nothing crazy about it. Uh, Mr. Bossman's basically the same thing, so you can lump those two together as my least favorites, I guess you could say. But still, Jacked Up Jack Lantern's awesome, and In the House is a tremendous episode that's really goofy and funny. Payback is a really funny one. There, there's a lot of good stuff here, which is why I'm always happy to come back and watch these every Halloween, because I get a nice mixture of all these different kinds of horror stories. And with the setting and characters, like in regular show, you know things are gonna get a little bit crazy. And that's what I love about the show, so much. Maybe one day I'll do a full review of the show. Who knows? It, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. It's eight seasons to go through. That's a lot of episodes, especially when they're split in two. So we'll see if that actually winds up happening. But I'm very happy to have talked about this today. Thank you all very much for watching, especially if you made it to the very end here. I really appreciate it. I, I can't wait to talk about more Halloween stuff down the road. We've only got, what, what's it now, like 18 days left at the time of releasing this video so we better make it count all right we gotta watch all those scary movies every single one of them get all the promotions ball lightning but i will see you all next time my voice is all shredded up from doing that spooky scary voice at the beginning of this video uh, so i'm gonna drink some Lacroix and try to forget while also watching some awesome halloween movies i encourage you all to do the same and i'll see you all next time goodbye